Hi! Okay, today uh, I'm gonna be talking about some of my favorite books, um, and why I like them. So, I guess we'll start with uh, my famous, um, my favorite, my favorite famous books about, uh, show business people. Um, one of these books is actually this, The Rat Pack, um, it's about Sammy Davis Jr., Dean Martin, Frank Sinatra, uh, Peter Lawford, and Joey Bishop. I mentioned them in it, and they're all buddies, obviously. And Frank Sinatra is one of my favorite singers, and this is, so I kind of have a bias towards the book and towards the guy. Um, cause I, I was like, I so I, I love Sinatra's voice and the way he sings. It made me want to, um... It makes me believe, like, I still have, I still, um, his song, his songs are so, they're not just songs that, they're just like, he's just saying them just to sing them. You can tell he sang them from the heart, too. And that's why I also like him. Um, and so when I found this book and I bought it, I had to buy it. Um, it's about him being younger, growing up, um, he used to work, it says, I mentioned it's like, a, I think, I believe it's like a, he used to sing it like a, like in the barber shop or something, um, which I'll have to double check to see if that's true or not. Um, the beginning kind of starts all over the place. Um, it's kind of not clicky, but because I guess Humphrey Bogart used to be in the group too. It it, it talks about it goes it goes in detail in here like a lot of detail. Um, there's a bit of. Um, I think there was like some racism in here too, but during the time it was a different time. I'm not like saying that was I'm not like giving excuse, but because um, there's a part where Sammy Davis Jr. he married a white woman, and that at the time that was he 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 got in, like I guess some he got I believe I read one part in the book where he got like threatened by some guy who's probably racist, obviously, um, for just like wanting to marry a white girl. And I guess, like, someone tried to talk him out of marrying her, even though he was in love with her, and she was in love with him. So I I, I did not like that part of the book, but I liked how um, Sammy Davis Jr. kind of, like, he still wanted to, like, be with her. But it was a struggle back then to um, interracial couples. It was probably, like, a big deal back then in the 50s and 40s, because I don't think it was very common. Um, and he was in the public eye too, so that must have been hard for him too, for them too. Um, anyways, well, and they give, they give some, I don't want to give looks like all the way, all the way, but like, um, they give some pictures in here of like some of the movie scenes and them singing and some of the scenes from the movies. There's one of like Sinatra playing the piano that I really liked. I'm trying to get to the point so it's not too long. And so I could talk about other books too. Um. They used to party too, um, uh, when they were younger, which I'm sure the fame probably had to do with that too. When they're like, if they be well, Sinatra he became famous when he was not like not like very young, but he became famous and then um, probably like in his like 30s, I want to say, 20s maybe. So I'm sure the fame probably. It, I don't think it ever. I don't think it went to his head too much. Where, but. Um, and it mentions, um, Sinatra, like, he had a temper, too, which I, I can relate to, but not in, like, in a very, like, overt way. I can, more, like, internally, like, I, I used to, when I was younger, I would get, like, easily angered very easily by things. I think those are just hormones. Um, but, uh, it talks about, you know, different, like, guest stars and stuff, and, Overall, I loved, I loved, I loved, I loved the title too, Neon Nights with the Kings of Cool, because they were cool, and because they, you know, they were very, they were just, I think they just, they were just a group of guys who just fit along so well together, they just, they just like meshed well together, they like, they meshed well, like together, like their personalities meshed well, well some of them did, but then they had like a falling out, it mentions in here somewhere. 
I haven't read it in a while. That's why I'm kind of trying to be vague about it too. As I'm, I'm still trying to remember certain things, but I don't want to give away everything. That was just one of my favorite books, The Rat Pack. Um, then there's one about... This one I about Clara Bow. She was an actress in the, I want to say, the 20s. And they give some pictures in here too. Ooh, I really like this one. The, I look at the eyeliner. You guys, look at the eyeliner. Look. She's really pretty. And, um, um, I believe she, cause she won a, she became famous because she won a contest. She grew up in poverty and she won, she won a contest where you had to like enter your photo to win like a modeling, not a modeling contract, but like, I guess to like somewhere in Hollywood or something. And on a whim, she was just like, you know what? I'm just going to do this and see what happens. And she kind of, it kind of mentions, I think she wanted to be an actress. But she, because she used to, like, go to, to movies, like, after school, even though she was kind of poor. She was born, like, in the poor side of the tracks or whatever. But she still wanted to, like, go to the movies. And then she would have kind of escaped through the movies. And she, it says in here, like, she, she rarely spoke of her childhood, which I found really sad because her childhood was so traumatic and awful. And so she probably had her own, like, things going on in her head you know after a childhood like that um and it was just living enough was tough I think that was one of the quotes in here which was like wow that's like really it really like spoke to to me <laughs> because like I could I can relate to that when I was younger and used to be like super depressed I can relate to that definitely um says they would like travel a lot they didn't really have a, like, a stable, she didn't have, like, a stable home life. Her father was very much, um, I don't want to spoil too much about the book. Anyway, but her childhood was very traumatic for her. And it was horrible. But she, she, she ended up winning. And this was the photo she used. She was really pretty. Look, this one right here. Not this one. Don't, not the guy in her, but this one. She used this photo. Isn't that, isn't she pretty? And then she ended up winning. Isn't that, and it's like, it sounds like a fairy tale, doesn't it? And that's why I kind of like it too. Um, and then she ended up becoming famous. Um, after a while, obviously. And then there was like something about her, her, her manager or something and her money that was like a big deal too. Because she didn't find out that she was actually, um, there was this thing about like money in here, money money issues or something not money issues but like people who are ma managing her money I mean the lady that was managing her money wasn't very like honest with her or something like that anyways well and it mentions like how like through it all she still was like a good person which I loved like the one the most out of it like she was overall like a good person she was just born in a very bad environment unfortunately but then when she got older she ended up kind of like turning her life around and she never was really like with like the high society types like not very um she was uh she was just like always herself really and she never felt like she had to like well she was an actress but she oh it mentions like courtrooms too so there was like some legal issues too and so that must have been stressful too back then. But anyways, um, but overall, I love how she was a silent screen star too. And when I was younger, I used to love watching, I used to love watching like the silent movies, like with the silent film stars. And she was one of the silent screen stars from the 1920s when it was, when this one silent films were starting out. I believe she was like one of the people who got to actually be in them. So that was, like, really cool. Um, and, oh, she won in a magazine's um, 1921 Fame and Fortune contest. Um, it says she once received 45,000 fan letters in a single month. So that's, like, a lot. And then I want to say that she, someone, I read someone actually used to, like, sign them personally. And one of the books I read, I swear I thought I read that about someone, 
where he or she would, he, whenever they get a fan letter, they would, like, sign their name. They'd always, like, if I would just sign their name personally after every letter instead of having someone else do it, which I love the idea of that. That's, like, that's, like, wow, they, like, that's a person dedicated to their fans. Like, that's really dedicated. Um, it was, like, I think it was, like, one of the, like, earlier film stars, though. It wasn't, like, anyone nowadays, but it was, like, I forget if it was a guy or a girl. <sighs> this is gonna bother me now. Sorry. Um, okay, well, that's that. Okay. Clara Bow, um, or Bow, I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name, honestly, but this is, like, one of my favorite books, um, and it just talks about, you know, her life, her overall life and everything, and I, I liked it. I really did like it, too, like the other book. Um, okay, this one, this one, okay, this one, this one's also one of my favorite books, okay, you might be surprised. Okay, um, okay. I heard, I heard, actually first heard about her, well not first heard about her, well I kind of like heard of her name before, but like I heard the song on the radio once where it was like a baby crying in the background and I was like, oh that's weird, but like I was listening to the lyrics and I was just like, oh this is, this is nice, you know, this is like really cool music, you know, and, and I'm like, oh who, who is this chick, I love her voice, this chick can really sing you know? And then I just loved the sound of her voice. And then later I looked it up and then I started like Googling her and was like reading about her life and everything. And then I'm like, wow, I'm like really fascinated by, by her because I can relate to certain things from her life. Not that like having siblings, I can't relate to that, but I can relate like to like her being shy, like in high school and stuff or feeling shy kind of and how she was like a really good student, like academically. I can relate to that too. Um, She mentions the baggy clothes. Oh, when she was 14. She became famous when she was very young. So that's, this is like, wow. That was like, that's like really young. She like, she really knew, I guess, from a young age that she wanted to become a singer. And I think she like, one of her relatives too, was a singer too. Or was like, or kind of like knew about the industry too. So, but anyways. Um... I love, I just love, I love, I just, I just love her, like, as a person, I just, I love her songs, I love her as a person, she was kind of like Frank Sinatra in a way, because she was like her own, like, individual person, even though, like, I'm sure she was getting, like, other people, like, trying to tell her, like, what to do and stuff, and, um, for her image and stuff, and what's, and... It talks about R. Kelly, which I'm not going to go into because that's just a whole nother story. <laughs> R. Kelly, that's a whole nother story. Um, uh, let's see what else. Um, what else can I talk about? this? She was very... Um, she was very open-minded. She was very... She sang from the heart too like Sinatra did, which I love about them too. You can tell they really loved what they did. And they, she must have really practiced a lot when she was younger and, like, really knew she wanted to become a singer. And she was really pretty, too. So that, that really was awesome. And, oh, and she was in Romeo Must Die. I have to say, I've never seen that movie of hers, but I did see um, The Queen of the Damned. And I think that's, like, one of my favorite movies, Queen of the Damned. Because it was just so, um... Queen of the Damned was just so unbelievable, but, like, in a good way. Like, because, like, it just, you never knew what was going to happen next in that Queen of the Damned movie. You just didn't know. And I kept looking at her, and I'm like, Aaliyah, you're supposed to be, you're good, though. You know, I kept, I kept, like, you know, in the, during the movie, I was like, oh, so different. It was so, it was, like, diff it was different for me to see her play, like, not a bad guy, but, like, you know, where you're, like, you're not sure about a character's, like, intentions or not in the film. But she was like she was like a good actress too. She was like really good singer, really good actress. She never really gave up her passion. She really loved singing. And I just really ashamed that she died so young. But her kindness lives on. And that's what I really love about her and Sinatra too, because they were very much about like even though like they had their own like behind the scenes like problems, like maybe like with other people, you know, that you might not hear about, but like 
overall they were still like good like at the core you know in here like they were still good people i feel like in some ways sinatra was misunderstood or because of uh some of the crowd he used to like hang out with which they were supposedly like mobsters and stuff but i'm, I'm not sure if that's like true or not that's like really wow sinatra like um but i guess like well i guess the mobster is not gonna tell you I mean, there's a, there's a famous quote I read once when I was, like, Googling some other actress that I didn't really know about, and she said, like, one of the quotes she said, she's not, like, one of the, like, famous actresses of the 30s or 40s, but she was, like, back then she was, like, one of, like, the minor actresses, and there was a quote of her saying, like, I didn't know he was a mobster, <laughs> like, and not about, like, Frank Sinatra, but about, like, a guy she knew, she's like, he didn't tell me he was a mobster when I met him, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, that sounds so, like, something a mobster would do, like, that, that totally does, and, like, I just kind of laughed at that, because I'm like, because you could tell, I could just, like, picture, like, the, 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 the blonde lady, like, just kind of, like, sitting there being, like, 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 I don't know, like, how she, like, who she even said that to, I don't know, but, like, it just, like, but they must have, like, remembered it and, like, typed it in the internetmoviedatabase.com, like, under the quote section. But, like, I just was, like, oh, that does sound like, that makes sense. Because I guess back then they're not gonna, like, they're not gonna, like, be, like, open about that kind of stuff. You know, they're not gonna be, like, oh, I'm a lobster who wants, who wants some free drinks, they're all on me. <laughs> you know, they're, no, they're not gonna do that, you know. Back then I'm sure they weren't like that or else they probably would have gotten killed or something. So I'm sure, um, anyways, I just went, I just, I just went on a tangent. Sorry. Um, well, that's the first part of my favorite books. I hope you liked it. And, um, that's that. Okay, that's my first part. Okay, bye.